My name is Jeremy Frey. I've been weaving for about six years now. I learned from my mother, who learned from her father, but also more recently she learned from Sylvia Gabriel, because um, her father does pack baskets and utility baskets and things like that. So I think, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the Basket Makers Alliance is why I'm weaving. And that's why a lot of people are weaving now. I mean, there would be barely any weavers if it weren't for them. Just because they encouraged the people who could weave to teach. And then that just kept going and going and going, and now there's a lot of weavers. I started, I took an interest in it a few years ago. I was older, and I moved out of my parents' house and started to appreciate it more. Because when I was younger, my mom started doing it. And it was neat, but I was still in my wild days. I tried it out, and I liked it. and. Immediately, I was able to sell my work, which was a great bonus for me, considering that I wasn't working at the time. And I've always, since I was, since I can remember, I've always wanted to be an artist that lived off the, off art. So it only seemed perfectly. It just it fit in perfectly. So I, I mean, to me, that was exactly what I always wanted to do. I just didn't know it would be baskets. That's all. He ended up teaching me because my mom's the type to do it for you and then give it to you and I just couldn't learn that way so I ended up learning from him and I took to it easily and after that I started selling them and people actually wanted them so it kept me going and I came up with all these new ideas for simple things and I don't know it just went from there. Now, my first basket was one of the Sylvie Gabriel's designs it was a point basket and it was, it, my mother said it was a difficult basket to start with. You know, most people start with a flat-sided basic basket, but I wanted to try and learn everything, all the different parts, like cutting down the standards, um, double bottoms, overweaves, everything all at once. And I said, you know, if I can do that, yeah, I can work back, work back over the little things that I might, that I might miss out on. So it was really frustrating doing that first basket and, the few after that, but once I got it, I think for me that was the best way to go. The first one I remember making was probably just a little simple basket about that big with weave probably that wide and I think it was colored. I don't remember what color, but it was simple and it was homely, but I sold it and after that I really remember doing the point baskets because those I felt like I could make them into something a little different with a lot of color. I love color. And that's pretty much what I'm known for now is those point baskets. That's why there's pots on the stove because they're always, they always have dye in them. It always looks like dirty dishes, but we just never put them away. Constantly doing this. When he first taught me, he was all into doing natural stuff. So I figured I have to do something to stand out a little bit more. So I started using color, and now he, he's grown accustomed to it, too, so <laughs> it's fun for now. But we're definitely going to school because that whole beetle thing, you know, we want to have a plan in case all of a sudden there is no ash. Yeah, I'm going back to school in the fall. I have to have a backup plan. I mean, if, if for me to stick my head under a rock and say it's not going to happen, I think would just it just isn't smart. I have to plan it ahead. And that's another thing I've been using when I'm actually trying to harvest on people's land is to tell them, you know, you can stop me from creating art with your wood, but you can't stop the bugs from eating it and turning it into a graveyard in your yard. So what would you rather have? A bunch of dead trees or some art floating around the world, you know? Either way, they're gone. <laughs> and some people still won't let me cut, knowing that. I already have the weaving technique down, and as long as I can find a material for standards that's as strong or as workable, I don't think I'll have to stop necessarily, but I'm pretty sure that all of our ash is going to be gone, and that this particular traditional style will die, one way or another. I don't know how I feel right now. I haven't really thought about it because... I don't want to get my hopes up and I don't want to be disappointed if something does happen really bad with all this. But if we can manage to save Ash somehow, then I think it's definitely open-ended. I think it'll only get better from here. 
it's a definite issue that is being dealt with as we speak, but not in the way that, that you may think, you know. They're not going to kill the bug off. They're not going to stop it. And some people realize that. Some people still haven't realized that. I think our energy should put, be put into seed banks in researching where ash grows the best. Because you can't just plant ash where pine is and say, hey, great, it's going to grow. You can't grow it, plant it up on a mountain. You can't plant it in, you know, it's specific soils, specific water sources, light, um, weather. That's where I think the research should go personally is into finding new areas it's going to grow very well in and replanting as soon as that bug's out of reach far enough that it can't come back and start eating them. The youth were labeled as carriers of culture because you know, we're the next generation and, and what we know is, how, is, what, is what the adults will know. So basically, I think, yeah, it's on our shoulders more than anything. And, and, and like they said, they may not be around to see it, but we still have to worry about it. So. People that are my age, even a little older, will still be around to teach when the trees come back. Be innovative and really stick to it. And it can be brought back. Everything's here for you. And you know what you, you know what you guys are doing to save this, and 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 what we have done. Basically, native peoples adapt to everything that happens. Everybody adapts. But you know we're adapting, and, and um, you know don't be afraid to do new things. And this is a, what we're showing you is a blueprint on what was done, but it doesn't. Everything changes with time.